Hey yo, what's up and welcome, I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the Save the Crew career. Let me start off by saying big thank you to everyone for all the support shown early on in this series. I think this is going to be a good one. I'm really, really interested in seeing how this goes and the new sliders that we implemented last episode are going to help a lot, a lot more competitive, a lot more challenging as well and... That's going to test the team, especially in this episode, as we have a look at what games are coming up on the schedule. To finish off the month of April, we have both games against the New York teams, away at New York Red Bulls, then home against NYCFC. And then for the month of May, we have Toronto twice, home and away, two games against New England as well, and then Montreal and Seattle to round off the month of May. That is a very, very challenging schedule for us. A couple of games back to back in there as well. We're gonna have to rotate the team. Although, Opoku, I can tell, is already becoming a fan favorite. I'm very seriously considering moving Zardes to the wing position and just rolling with Opoku up top. But for now, he's still a little bit too raw to rely on consistently. So maybe with a little bit of training, we'll get there, but I'm not sure how we're gonna work that yet. And the last thing because I almost forgot to do this just now before I went into the first match, is I got a comment last episode saying to change the number for Pedro Santos. He is now the number nine for Columbus, so I will give him that number. And it is currently vacant because I believe it belonged to Ola Kamara, if I'm not mistaken. So now it belongs to Pedro Santos. So now we're set to get into this first game today, and we're away at New York Red Bulls. Our starting 11 is nearly fully fit and ready to go. Our reserves though on the bench, not so much. We're gonna struggle for fitness today. We just went 120 minutes against Colorado and we're dealing with an injury to Mike Grella. So the only other fit winger in the entire team is Nico Hansen, but he's only at about half fitness because he went the full 120 against Colorado midweek. So we're struggling for fitness a little bit outside of this, this starting 11. Hopefully the starters can get it done here today. Here is a look at New York Red Bulls starting 11, and it's a weird formation that they are running out there. It's five at the back um, with kind of a diamond midfield. It's it's very strange. There should be quite a lot of space, though, in and around Tyler Adams. Well, he's a good midfielder, but we'll have to see if he can cover all that space by himself. All right, let's do this thing, man. Back in it. This is also Giassi Zardes' full debut, I, I think, in the team I'm pretty sure it is he had a brief substitute appearance in his return from injury but he hadn't actually started a game i think this is his first start there's a good tackle and we got the ball up for Iguain. we're gonna play it for zardes here he does have the four star skills and he busts them out zardes oh close down there's so many defenders back at all times for new york red bulls like i, I don't know where the space is going to come to get a shot away there we go that's not the right pass there we go Zardes for Higuain, turns it, oh, block, Escobar, Martinez lays it across for Santos, in for Zardes, blocked again, we still have the ball though, it comes out for Archer, blocked again, there's, look, how many, there's like 12 red shirts in the box, I swear they have more than 11 players on the field, and we have this ball up for Higuain, back out for Archer, Archer, we actually have some space in here, you know, Archer's coming in, Plays it across. There is Zardes. And there is the first goal. We finally opened them up on a counter attack. Wow, that was... This is going to be a nightmare, man. New York has so many numbers back all the time. But they finally overcommitted just a bit. And we caught them on a quick counter attack, thankfully. And Zardes, I think... Well, he, that has to be his first goal. Because he's only played like 20 minutes before now. So Zardes gets his first goal in the black and gold. And we've got an early lead on the road. All right, Red Bulls going Route 1 stuff now. Abubakar does not deal with that very well, but thankfully Mensa is there to back him up. That could have been a disaster. So to start the second half, no changes for either team. I mean, we really don't need to make any. We were fine in that first half. Defended very, very well. And attacked pretty decently as well as Zardes gets an early tackle in here. Santos... Takes that around one defender, and he's got it for Higuain. Not enough power on the field. Well, I cannot do low shots anymore. Will Trap coming through the midfield here. They're not really picking him up very well. And he allows us to have a little bit of an attack. No, Zardes, you hit it right at him. 
All you do is take it around him a little bit, and you were good, but good high press for Valenzuela to win that back. And the ball's through for Higuain. Higuain is not going to miss from there. Or is he? How did he manage to miss that? Oh, ball over the top. Affle tracking back. Oh, that's not good. That is a really dangerous chance. Oh, thankfully, I think that's Tommy Redding, their center back. Well, there is the final whistle, and this does end 1-0. There was literally no offense in that at all whatsoever. I mean, we created a couple of decent looks. To be honest, Higuain was... That might have been his worst match of the season. He just was off in that game. He, I think he had two one-on-one -on -one chances and missed them both pretty badly. Just not a good match from him. And when he struggles, we struggle as a team. So, at least we came through. We got that point. Zardes got on the board for his first goal with Columbus. We got the three points. So, all in all, we got the job done. It wasn't too bad. So, we're going to be jumping straight into the next one here. And we welcome NYCFC to Columbus. And I'm going to make one change to the starting 11 for this one. Kofi Niarko, the youngster out of the Youth Academy, is going to get the start at left back. Only 52 rated, but... We got to get him some playing time at some point. This might not be the best time to do it as NYCFC is in fifth place. But we, we have to get him playing time. On top of that, Valenzuela, our normal left back, hasn't had a single minute on the bench yet. He's played every single minute of the season. Needs a little bit of a break. He was very, very tired towards the end of that Red Bulls game. So we're going to go with the youngster, Niarco. Rest of the team stays the same. All right, so a quick look at the NYCFC starting 11, and it's just really, really solid, well-built team, very balanced, and that attacking trio of Wallace, Villa, and Medina, very, very dangerous as well. So NYCFC is a team that typically gives me problems. We'll see how we do in here today. All right, here we go. Higuain on the ball, running forward. I'm looking for a little bit better performance than he had in that last match against Red Bulls, and he's just, he's not off to a very good start again. I don't know what's going on with him today. He's just not, uh-oh. Oh, Maxi Morales. Wow, he slowed down. I'm not sure what he's doing there, and Harrison Affle is able to close him down, although he did lose the ball again, and it's up for Medina, and it's through for Wallace, and he missed. Whew, I really thought that was going to be 1-0. We're going to play this for Santos. Flicks on for Zardes. Zardes gets that ball up for... Callens, I'm pretty sure that shot was going wide anyway, but then Callens blocked it. Oh, that was a big miss. Boy, David Villa takes that in stride through the midfield. Mensa is over to clear him out. Oh, no. Oh, it's David Villa. I turned the wrong way. What a save by Zach Steffen. Trap those Zardes. Through for Martinez. That's a good play. Martinez off the post. That was a really, really well-placed finish. He went for the, the placement instead of power. He almost had it. Dang it, that was close. All right, we have a throw in. We've got the momentum. Can we get this goal before halftime? That would be honestly ideal right now. We don't want to let them have a chance to get back in this. Martinez again. He just can't shoot. So as we start the second half here, I've made one change. I, I, I can't go with Martinez right now on the right-hand side. Both of our best chances have come through him, and he can't shoot. I need someone over there that could finish a chance, so I've moved Zardes to the right, and Apoku is back in up top at striker. So hopefully, we can be a little bit more consistent with our finishing. Uh-oh. Oh, David Villa, that's a nice play for him. There is Mensa. Somehow, Villa just runs through the tackle of Mensa, and it's 1-0 NYCFC. They've gotten so many of those lucky bounces. I've tackled the ball very, very well in this game. The entire team has done very well getting a foot to the ball, dispossessing them but they just run through every tackle like there's no way to stop them if that's the case and right there david via just runs through a tackle of jonathan mensa and it's an open tap in for i think morales yeah maxi morales one nil 60 minutes in arthur out wide for santos looking for niarco that's a good play niarco back in for santos he just didn't shoot why didn't santos shoot what happened there? Man, we're getting kind of cheesed out of this thing. Like, I don't know what's going on. That is my... <laughs> There's a prime example of it. What was that? Come on, man. If they score off of this... Oh, my goodness. That's out. Thank good. What is happening in this game? Here we go. Higuain. 
Play this ball for a Poku. Puts... Are you kidding me? Callan slid before the ball was even there and he still was in the right position. Like, that is how our game has gone and a Poku is down hurt. We have time for another attack, maybe? Nope, because that was another bad pass. And we lose at home to NYCFC in a game it just felt like we were not supposed to win. NYCFC were faster, better, just like everything we tried to do, they were there before we were. Like, they knew what we were trying to do. Every single pass, every single move, they beat us to the spot every single time. That was fighting an uphill battle from the get-go. And we lost to a very, very good team there. That was, that was frustrating. And to make matters worse here, on top of that loss that we just took, we lost to Poku as well for three weeks to a sprained knee. So, uh, yeah, Adam, Adam John is back in the team. That sucks. I was actually considering starting a Poku up top in this next one and playing Zardes on the right just to see how it goes starting a match. But uh, that's not going to happen now. So we just had the next set of youth scouting reports come back, and I signed quite a few new players for our youth academy. So we can go through those really quick. John Kiaga, a center mid, 15 years old. Has a lot of time to develop, and he's going to need it. Only 41 overall. Carson Taylor, a new winger into the Youth Academy. Decent overall already at 53 at 16 years old, so looking pretty decent. Uh, Frank Brown's a center forward, which is important. We've been talking about we might need a new striker, so maybe at some point he's, he finds some time in the senior team. Uh, a couple of new right backs, Wakili Ezulike and Eric Ababio, although Ababio is 6'5", and Wazulike is 6'2" as is Frank Mensa, who was already in there, and Niarka, who we called up last episode, is six foot two. I don't know what is going on with these gigantic fullbacks, but I don't particularly like my fullbacks to be that freaking tall. I like them like six foot or shorter, and they're all over six two, so whatever. Uh, a new winger, Anthony White, 16 years old, 54 overall. Jordan Smith, 15 years old, 48 overall. And then Amadako and Rogerson were already in there. So a lot of new faces coming through the Youth Academy, which is nice. And because that was the last month for both of those scouts in their locations, we can go ahead and set them up in new areas. Although, George Mathis was in the United States. I'm going to keep him there. Um, he was looking for wingers before. I think I'll just set him on... You know what? Maybe I go attacker? Maybe I'll look for some American strikers. We could really use the striker in this team. So, I'll look for an attacker for him. And for J Charles Jackson... He was in Ghana. I'm not going to keep him there this time. I'm going to go for... We have some Brazilians and Argentinians in the team. I'm going to go Argentina, actually, for him. And I'm going to set him on any, because I don't think there's really another priority position that we have to look for. So, yeah, we'll set him on any and let him look for some players down there. Our next match is going to be at home once again. And we're going to be taking on 8th place New England. And originally I was planning on simulating this one as we play them again later in the month anyway. And then playing Toronto for the last match. But you know what? We've only scored one goal in two games today. We could use a bit of a... I don't want to say an easy match, but something a little less intense, we'll say. Well, I'm trying to put it nicely. New England's not that great. They have a minus 8 goal differential. Basically what I'm trying to say is I want to score some goals. And this looks like an ideal place to do it. So here's our first look at this New England team this season. Offensively, they're pretty solid. Juan Aguadelo, Lee Wynn, Fagundes, Rowe. It's a good offensive team. Defensively, not so much. And once again, just want to score some freaking goals today. All right, we have a corner here. And you know what? I don't care if it's cheesy. I'm going to go for this corner tactic. I just want some goals in there. And there it is, Jonathan Mensa. Is he offsides? He's offsides. I can't even get a cheesy goal to go my way. Oh my goodness, Kellen Rowe is already up this wing. Abubakar is getting over. How did that just work? Mens is there as well. Don't call a penalty, ref, please. I'm begging you, man. When it's not your day, it's really not your day. And today is not our day. It's just not. I don't know if it's me not playing well. I just stomped on Lee Wynn's freaking ankle. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just not playing well today, I guess. I don't know. Lee Wynn up for the penalty here. He's going to go to the left. And Zach Steffen, of course, comes up with a huge save for Zardes. Zardes looking over for Martinez. That's a beautifully weighted pass from Zardes. 
Martinez looking in. I was trying to get to it. I really wanted that for Higuain. Santos. How did he not score that? He was literally, there was nobody in front of the goal. And he still didn't, wasn't able to get enough power on that to score. Come on, Higuain. There's a good move. And then loses. I'm trying. I'm really trying. All right. Ball in here. Arter. Higuain got caught up on the ref. But there is a ball, Martinez. You have to... You have to score. Oh, my God. He almost messed it up again. This dude is a jinx in front of net, I swear. But he finally does score his first goal of the season. And we are all over New England early. We look the better team. We should be the better team. We have to win this game at home. Philadelphia is retaking first place in the Eastern Conference. We need these three points to keep pace with them. So this is kind of a, a, kind of a clutch game for us today. There you go, Zardes. Put him on his heels. Zardes still making the run. Play it in. Nicely done. Find it to Higuain. Higuain back for Zardes. Knighton with a really nice diving save. Denying Zardes on the doorstep. Almost had the 2-0. He's going to go for Santos. In there for Arter. Arter. Nice pass there. Across for Martinez for his second. Why did I think passing it to him was a good idea? I mean, he's wide open. Nobody in front of him. But he cannot shoot. Nice move by Higuain. Ball up for Zardes. Takes it around. And then looking for Higuain. Oh, it's actually Pedro Santos. What was that? That almost went out for a throw-in. Across for Santos. Nice move by Pedro Santos, though. And he shoots. And he just... I don't know what else to do. <laughs> it's just not our day. I, we're going to be lucky to come away with this 1-0 victory. There we go. That's a great... Ref, you, you saw me getting tripped, right? That was a great run. I don't know who that was coming through the middle. I, I think it was Eduardo Ed, Eduardo Sosa, maybe? I don't know. Just... Uh, that is 1-1 one, one, or 1-0, one three straight games in a row. Two wins and a loss. Wow, I'm ready to put my head through a freaking wall. I mean, it feels like I've already done that three times today. I just... I don't know how to score goals right now. We're just not getting it done. And my my answer was going to be to bring a Boku back into the starting 11, but we lost him. I just, I'm out of ideas right now. We got to kind of go back to the drawing board. Well, at least we got the three points there. So that is where we're going to end things for today. We start off next episode with a match against Toronto, which is a pretty big one. I think we're at home again for that one. And we'll play them away later in the month. And right now we sit top of the Eastern Conference, tied with Philadelphia on points, but they do have a game in hand. And in the Western Conference, Sporting Kansas City is on 20 as well. They've actually had a really, really good run of games recently. And they've caught us in points as well. But as for us scoring goals today, I'm not, I'm not sure what's happening. I mean, to be honest, I don't like Zardes up top. I, he, th all three games today, he played up there. Scored one goal, hasn't been involved in the offense very often, just not in the right spots, not making the right runs. I really want to try him out on the right-hand side, but I don't have a striker to play up top right now. And I know I can go out and sign a free agent striker, but I don't want to do that. I really want to try to get by this season with what we have, unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, if we get another injury in the striker spot, then we'll sign somebody. But for right now, we're going to keep going with what we have, just rely on the players that are already in the team and then eventually some youth academy players coming through in the second half of the season. But I don't know, man. I don't think Zardes is going to be the option up top for us this year or in this series. I think he's going to be if he stays in the team. If he stays in the team. That's how much I haven't been impressed by him. If he stays in the team, I think it's going to be as a winger, not as a striker. So I don't know. We'll get back in next episode. we got some really, really big games coming up. And we'll just continue to grind them out and see what happens with this team. So that's it for this one. If you did enjoy it, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you when we come back for some more Save the Crew. See ya.